Welcome to the Health Equity and Prevention Primer. Module 1, Achieving Equity in Health and Safety Through Primary Prevention, sets the stage for this online series. Primary prevention is a key strategy for eliminating inequities in health and safety. This module provides an overview of primary prevention and previews materials that will be covered later in the series. After completing Module 1, you will be able to define the terms primary prevention, health disparities, and health inequities. You will also be able to identify examples of primary prevention strategies and describe why primary prevention is vital to achieving equity in health and safety outcomes. Today, there's a growing consensus that prevention is central to controlling health care costs and helping people live healthier, more productive lives. President Barack Obama declared that in the absence of a radical shift towards prevention and public health, we will not be successful in containing medical costs or improving the health of the American people. But what is meant by the term prevention? We define primary prevention as a systematic process that promotes healthy environments and behaviors. Primary prevention reduces the likelihood or frequency of an injury, condition, or illness. Primary prevention means taking action to prevent problems from occurring in the first place. Prevention hasn't always received the attention it deserves. Historically, society's response to illness and injury has focused on increasing the quality and availability of health care services. This is important because significant disparities in access and quality of health care do exist, and when people need health care, it should be affordable and available. But health care alone will not solve our nation's health crisis. By design, health care generally treats people once they are sick or injured, one patient at a time. Health care is not the primary determinant of health. The U.S. spends a lot on medical services. As the bar on the right shows, 96% of our national health dollars are spent on medical services. By comparison, only 4% goes to prevention. This imbalance is startling when you consider the bar on the left. It shows that behaviors and the environment account for 70% of what influences health outcomes. As we'll soon describe, Unhealthy behaviors and environmental exposures can largely be prevented. The arrow pointing towards prevention indicates the important relationship between prevention, behaviors, and environments. Let's take a look at why. Consider this. In the United States, heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, and injuries and violence are the five leading causes of death. There are large racial and ethnic disparities for each of these conditions. In fact, they disproportionately affect specific population groups who experience a higher burden of disease, higher rates of premature death and chronic conditions, and diminished quality of life and productivity.